Everyone loves magic items, but one of the new ones found here in Call of the Netherdeep makes me want to go, what the f Game Master's here, and we'll get into the weird one in a moment. And before I can really deep dive into this, I need to explain quickly that a lot of the odd magic that happens in the Xandra, the overall setting here, uh, comes from one of the moons, Ruidius. Folks that inhabit the lands don't talk about it much, as the magical power that comes from that can corrupt pretty much everything that it touches. And this includes magic items. I only point this out because some of the magic items that we're going to cover have also been influenced by Ruidium. These are crystals and minerals that are cast off from the moon Ruidius. Uh, and quick disclaimer, I evidently have a difficult time pronouncing Ruidium, and sometimes I want to say it as Rudium instead. And if I do that, please forgive me, my brain is moving faster than my speech. Let's jump right in and check out these 15 new magic items. Breathing Bubble. This reminds me of one of those big wobble bubble things. It's a, well, bubble that fits over your head and gives you one hour of breathable air. It fails to go into a good description of exactly how big it is when it's not being worn, and it also doesn't mention how fast it can recharge. Like, if I wear it for 59 minutes and take a big gulp of air, hold my breath, take it off for just a moment, and then put it back on, can I breathe again for another hour? DMs, what's your call? Let me know in the comments below. Earring of Message. Uh, this looks like one of those cheap earrings that you'd find uh, kind of slightly overpriced at a crafter's table at the farmer's market. It's a small blue crystal wrapped in a copper wire, has five charges, and when you wear it, you can use one of those charges to cast the message spell. Uh, basically, you point towards a creature and whisper a message to it, and only it can hear you, and when it replies, only you can hear its reply. The earring gains 1d4 plus 1 expended charges daily at dawn. Jewel of the Three Prayers. This is a golden disc amulet that was given to Alexian by three prime deities, and it has three states, with each state granting its own power. However, upon initially finding it, only one of the states is active. The other two must be kind of awakened before their powers manifest. The three states originate from Sihanine, the Moonweaver, Avandra, the Changebringer, and Corellan, the Arkheart. When found, it is dormant and only provides Sihanine's power. In the dormant state, it stays as a golden disc, and while wearing it, it provides plus one bonus to armor class, and you can use an action to shed light in a 15-foot radius and dim light for an additional 15 feet. It has three charges, which you can expend one to cast the invisibility spell, and it regains all its expended charges daily at dawn. In its awakened state, it receives the blessing of Avandra, and three spires unfurl from its center like budding flowers, and the bonus to your armor class increases to plus two. Its total charges increases to five, and you can spend one of them to end the following condition upon yourself, either being grappled, paralyzed, or restrained. When you see another creature within 60 feet of you fail a saving throw, you can expend one charge as a reaction to allow that creature to re-roll. In its exalted state, the jewel has received the blessing of Corellin the Arkheart and is surrounded by a halo of gold. Wearing it increases your armor class to plus three, and the number of charges increases to seven. You also gain the ability to breathe underwater, and allies within 30 feet of you can also breathe underwater. As a bonus action, you can spend a charge to target yourself or a willing creature and teleport within 15 feet. Creatures within 5 feet of that landing spot must make a DC 18 constitution saving throw, and on a fail, they take 4d10 radiant damage and are blinded. Now, before we get into the various metals, I'd love to ask that if you are enjoying this video, please poke that like button. It really helps to spread my videos to more eyes. Thanks. Metal of Muscle. This is a metal uh, that's more like a, like a stress reliever, sort of. You squeeze it in your hand, and in doing so, you gain advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws for one hour. Once it's been used, it can't be used again, and it becomes unmagical. Metal of the Conch. Similar to the Metal of Muscle, you squeeze this one and your swimming speed is equal to your walking speed for one hour, and then it dies. Metal of the Horizon Back. Probably named after the Horizon Back tortoise found in the monster section of this book, this metal allows you to increase your armor class by five, and once you use it, it becomes non-magical. 
Medal of the Maze. There is a maze inscribed on this. Kind of reminds me of Westworld, that little toy that they had. And when you trace it, you gain advantage on wisdom checks, and you know the quickest route to the end of any non-magical path or maze for one hour. And like the others, it stops being magical after you use it. Medal of the Meat Pie. Uh, you shove this one in your mouth and you gain 2d4 plus 2 temporary hit points, and it kind of smells faintly of a baked pie crust, and yep, using it, it dies. Metal of the Wetlands. You can run your finger along the edge of this one and move across difficult terrain, and that doesn't cost extra movement for one hour. And yeah, it dies too. Metal of Wit. Smack this one into your head and you gain advantage on intelligent checks and saving throws for one hour and then it dies ring of red fury now this is one where we are going to get a little bit into the ruidium corruption uh, it's a ring that has a red strip of ruidium running through it and while you wear it you can breathe water and your swimming speed is equal to your walking speed as a bonus action you can use the ruidium rage ability and it gives you advantage on strength checks and saving throws and when you hit with an attack you can add your proficiency bonus to the attack roll and difficult terrain doesn't cost extra movement plus you are also immune to paralyzed and restraining conditions and that doesn't all seem too bad however here's where the negative comes in when you use that ruidium rage as a bonus action, you have to make a DC 20 Charisma saving throw. If you fail, you gain one level of exhaustion and you are corrupted. Now, here's where it gets interesting. In the process of playing the game, if the Apotheon is killed or destroyed or redeemed, then all of the Ruidium in Exandria is destroyed instantly, and this particular ring becomes a ring of free action. What's Apotheon? Killed? Destroyed? Redeemed? Now, that's for another video. Ruidium Armor. Like the ring, this too is infused with Ruidium. Wearing it gives you resistance to psychic damage, you can breathe water, and your swimming speed is equal to your walking speed. For its corruption element, when you roll a 1 on a saving throw while wearing this armor, make a DC 15 charisma saving throw. If you fail, you gain one level of exhaustion, and you are corrupted. Like with the ring, if Ruidium is destroyed, the armor becomes plus 1 armor. Ruidium Shield. This is a large wooden shield infused with Ruidium, and while you have this, you have resistance to psychic damage. You can breathe water, and swimming speed is equal to your walking speed. When you do take psychic damage while holding this shield, you can use its ability Psychic Reflection, which will allow you to reflect that damage to another creature. For its corruption, when you use the reflection property, you gotta make a DT, a, a, a 20 charisma saving throw, else you gain one level of exhaustion. And if the ruidium is destroyed, it just becomes a plus two shield, which is still okay. <laughs> ruidium weapon. Now, this can almost be given to any weapon that you run across for DMs. Like the other items, it grants you the ability to breathe water, and your swimming speed is equal to your walking speed. You can use its Ruidium Strike ability. Uh, when you hit a creature, it will give you an extra 2d6 psychic damage to that. When you roll a 1 on an attack roll, you have to roll a 20 Charisma saving throw. On a failed save, you're going to gain one level of exhaustion, and you become corrupted. And again, if the Ruidium is destroyed, it becomes a plus 2 weapon. Still, not that bad. So guys, at the top of this video, I mentioned that there was one magic item that made me go, what the, f this is it, the teleportation tablet. Not because it's super, super powerful, but because it's just really complex, at least upon my first couple of times to read it. And I really like to summarize what these magic items do, but in this instance, this thing is so complex, I'm just gonna read it word for word. Teleportation tablet. This clay tablet is 8 inches long, 4 inches wide, and half an inch thick. Inscribed on it is the sigil sequence for a permanent teleportation circle. A creature that studies the sequence for 10 minutes can make a DC-21 intelligence arcana check, learning the cir circle's destination on a success. You can use an action to break the tablet in half, turning it to dust. If the tablet is broken, while it is on the same plane of existence as the teleportation circle whose sigil sequence was engraved on it, a 10-foot diameter teleportation circle of glowing blue light appears on the ground in an unoccupied space you choose within 30 feet of you. 
This teleportation circle has the characteristics of one created using the teleportation circle spell, except that it connects to the teleportation circle whose sigil sequence appears on the tablet. The teleportation circle created by the tablet disappears at the end of your next turn. I really think that that could have been simplified. One thing I've noticed, there is a lot of magic items in here that are directly tied to underwater adventuring, granting you the ability to breathe underwater and explore and perform combat. Even several of the monsters within this book are underwater dwellers. And don't worry, we'll cover some of those in future videos, and you can keep tabs on them by checking out our Call of the Netherdeep playlist here. Now, of the 15 magic items, which ones are you most curious about using? Which ones are you likely to avoid? Let me know in the comments below, and until next our paths cross, may you not find yourself corrupted by ruidium, rudium, that red stuff.